welcome to Ed Beck Diaries. Um, today I'm going to talk in a little bit of detail about viruses. Mm, not that virus. Um, yeah, we could uh, we get enough of that on the TV. Now, what I'm going to talk today about is different diseases, stroke viruses that affect the common rabbit. So, out of those, uh, the the first one I'd like to talk about is uh, myxomatosis. And then I will go on to talk about your VHD or your rabbit um, hemorrhagic disease virus or what we call VHD1 and VHD2. So what is myxomatosis? Basically myxomatosis is a pox virus um, native to Brazilian cottontails or even forest cottontails in the South and Central America. Um, also, you've got them across uh, the, the bush rabbits in North America as well. So, this pox virus, it's uh, in these rabbits in which it sort of originated, uh, the, the cottontails, um, it's not that severe. Uh, and it's only in the European rabbit um, does it create a fatal uh, disease. So, what we've got there is... Uh, a prime example where myxomatosis is an example of what occurs when virus jumps from one species to another species. Hmm, we've come across that before as well. I'm, I'm going to do my utmost not to talk about the the, uh, the the big COVID that's going on at the moment. There we go, I've mentioned the name now. But needless to say, um, because this virus jumped species... Um, it's been extensively studied uh, specifically for that reason. Um, and what I'm actually going to do is put at the end of this presentation um, is some links if anybody's really interested in reading in finer detail. Um, it's it's going to be available for it there for you to have a look at. So, was the introduce, introduction of myxomatosis deliberate? Well... The virus was introduced into Australia, France and Chile in the early 50s, um, basically to control European rabbits. And I think the catch is there, isn't it? It was intentionally introduced to control. Well, yeah. Was it deliberate? Most definitely was. Um, and in that time, it has killed millions, tens of millions of wild rabbits, let alone how many domestic pets it's also taken out on its journey. So, myxomatosis is a fatal disease to European rabbits. The reason why I'm sort of reiterating that is that our pet rabbits are of that same species. Yeah, they are the common garden European rabbit. All right. So, the pox virus can be categorised by swellings and lesions that seep pus, and these swellings occur in different parts of the body, but predominantly around the openings, and that being the face or the the eyelids. So I am going to share a, a, a picture there of an infected uh, rabbit with myxomatosis. I'm going to apologise. It's not nice. Um, but myxomatosis is not nice. And uh, if it helps anybody prompt the idea that you would go out and do something about it, great. Okay. Myxomatoses are spread predominantly from biting insects. Um, and they can be predominantly fleas. But mosquitoes and midges can play their role in the transmission of this infection. In the UK, it is the rabbit flea that's the main culprit. So, fleas. Yeah, as you can see, they're horrible little things. Um, the thing is with the rabbit flea, it is have a tendency to not be as dark as what you'd call a cat and the dog fleas. So, it's very difficult to spot. Um, and so consequently there, um, that is difficult if you've got fleas. Now, to be honest with you, all animals carry fleas to some degree. Um, it's the mass infestation that causes a huge problem. Now, talking about fleas, there's an interesting fact with regards to a flea's life cycle, um, especially the rabbit flea's life cycle, and uh, it synchronises its reproduction um, with the status of the rabbit. So what do I mean by that? So fleas are carried around on the adult rabbit through most of their life and it's only when they come into the vicinity of a pregnant female rabbit 
um, do they become sexually mature? Okay, um, and then obviously they will reproduce, lay their eggs and their larvas, and through to the pupa stage. So the pupas are actually born when you've got a nest of kits, baby rabbits. Okay, helping its own offspring feed uh, from the unsuspected young rabbits. Okay. Now, this is where mixed mitosis fundamentally gets passed. These fleas, if they are potentially infected by Mr. Uh, mixed mitosis virus, um, they can literally carry that virus dormantly um, in the larva or in the pupa stage um, for anything up to 200 days. So, yeah, you can understand now why now it's so difficult to remove. Now, just a, a, a quick one on that. Now, for, for those who know me, I have a few rabbits. And uh, not that I'm hyper paranoid uh, about fleas, but uh, I am on the case all the time for the simple reason being is that they are the vector for not only that diseases, but a number of other diseases as well, um, which we, we will talk about as we go on. So how, um, how do you know if your rabbit's got fleas? So obviously without coating through the coat and looking for it, you're only going to see it if they are sort of aggressively infected. But what I have got is, I've put an image up there again, is the telltale signs that I look for. Now, I'm also a rabbit judge. Um, I'm not a very good one or a very experienced one, but needless to say, I do know that when I've got a rabbit on the show table, that I will always look in the ears for signs of flea flea bites okay and uh, you'll see from the image that I've put there is that they, they stand out quite well um, uh, uh, against the finer skin of the ears why the ears well as for those who know rabbits regulate their temperature through ears by putting a blood through into the veins um, and then allowing that heat to escape so consequently the skin's really quite thin and it's blood rich yeah just the type of thing that a flea would uh, love to feed upon. So that's your telltale sign. And here um, at our place here, every spring, we absolutely gut the place. We take out every cage, every hutch, um, deep clean, um, and basically look to eradicate the best of our abilities any of those little larva or, or pupae that are hiding away in the nooks and crannies in the cages basically to give our own rabbits when we go into the breeding cycle the best chance of not being infected and consequently picking up necessarily diseases okay so myxomatosis can be spread also through contact and inhalation so you can imagine in a warren environment where the rabbits are in close proximity, living close together, um, it can also be spread that way. So not just necessarily fleas or mosquitoes. Okay, The risk of infection to your pet rabbits is relatively low, but that depends very much on their contact with wild rabbits. Yeah, So if you've got a warren 100 yards down the road from you to your home and you've got rabbits outside in hutches, you, 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 the risk obviously uh, rises from that and, and also the weather conditions play a part because if you've got infected rabbits living in that warren and mosquitoes are feeding off them and you're within a, a, a reasonable distance I think blow flies can also pass it as well um, you, you, you've got to be aware that uh, the, the, the risk of infection if it's in the local warren can spread to your pets okay um, Though uh, mosquitoes are highly seasonal, what you'll also find is that there's a link between the number or the outbreak of myxomatosis based on the season associated around the reproduction of your mosquitoes and your fleas. Okay. Um, can midges pass on it? Yeah, the, there's anecdotal evidence that midges can as well. Um, but there's also evidence that if a cat or a flea has a cat or a flea, sorry, a cat or a dog's fleas um, are carrying the virus, they can also transmit across that to your pet rabbits. So be conscious of, of fleas from cats and dogs as well. 
there are a few different strains of myxomatosis and they vary in nastiness. Um, those that are at the top of the table, the most virulent, virulent or the most nastiest, I'll say that word for the life of me, um, those rabbits that are infected by the nastiest strains of myxomatosis die very quickly. Um, that, in that being said, basically means that the, it's not transmitted that readily. Okay? Environmental temperatures also play uh, uh, an important part in the mortality routes as the disease appears to be more lethal in low temperatures. Okay? So catching myxomatosis in the heart of the winter is, is going to see the rabbit off a lot quicker. Yeah? In wild rabbits, the outbreak uh, comes and goes, and this is again down to the, the nature of the strain and the immunity of the population of rabbits. So you can have feast and famines of, of, of the virus, and I think, again, for those who have local rabbits, wild rabbits will be aware that uh, the, the virus seems to come and go. Um, as we said, the most common route of infection is through uh, an insect bite and the disease starts um, typically and develops after four or five days of being bitten. Okay? How it manifests itself to start with is by the swelling of the eyes within those four or five days. The eyelids become thicker and eventually the eyelids will close up as you can see on the image that I've just put up. Yeah. By the ninth day, um, secondary swellings develop throughout the body, body, typically the nose, the lips, the eyes, the base of the ears and, and around the, the private parts of the genitals of the rabbits. The severity and distribution of the lesions affects the outcome of the disease. Yeah. It can take six to eight weeks for the lesions to settle down if the rabbit is to survive. Okay. And I'll be honest with you, in many cases they do not. Okay, now on that note, one of the things that I did do um, is back in um, 2014, I created a group called the Myxomatosis and VHD Map on Facebook. Again, I'll put a link down there for you. And what that was is that I wanted to understand in my own, in my own mind's eye the uh, prevalence of these diseases throughout the country. Um, so as I said, I started it up in 2014. It's still running now. I think we've got over uh, 4,000 members that, po uh, that uh, point, uh, sorry, point that publish uh, any sightings of myxomatosis or any uns uh, any suspected deaths that may be associated with uh, the uh, VHD, be it strain one or strain two. Okay, um, and. In mapping that, um, we actually watched specifically the VHD strain come across from Europe and spread throughout the UK. We will talk about the, the VHD and, and how that uh, affects rabbits uh, in, in a bit. So, on the onset, it's hard to know if the rabbit will survive and which one will die. Lesions around the nose can block and cause respiratory issues and secondary infections such as uh, pneumonia are common. And again, if the rabbit's carrying under any underlying uh, illnesses as well, um, myxomatosis could be the vector that just uh, finishes the poor beastie off. Okay, The cause of death is not always clear, um, but obviously the infection from myxomatosis has played a significant role. It is possible for rabbits to survive myxomatosis, okay? um, but it can take sort of six to eight weeks for them to recover. And at the end of the period, as you can see from the images, the lesions dry up and fall away and the skin heals, but they will be scarred for life. Okay? Several factors determine whether a rabbit survives or dies from myxomatosis um, and how long they live after the infection. Experimental studies have shown infected rabbits mount an immune system uh, about seven days after infection, which reach its peak level at about 28 days. Antibodies are persistent for prolonged periods and give an absolute Im uh, immunity for many months. Parental transfer of these antibodies to the young um, takes place 
and passive immunity can last four or five weeks in the young'uns. Very young rabbits without this immunity are particularly susceptible to the infection and die more rapidly than the adult animals. And some rabbits seem to have a genetic resistance to the infection. infection. Vaccinations against myxomatosis has progressed over the years. And uh, here in the UK and in Europe, we use the Nobivac um, Mixo RHD vaccination, which uh, appears to be extremely effective. Okay. On that note, where's this information come from? Um, I've done a bit of research. I've showed you the links on there. Um, but if you wanted to ever have a look at yourself, the one of the best sites out there is uh, a website from Francis Hawk Harcott Brown. Um, I've sat for a number of um, CPD events with uh, Francis exceptionally knowledgeable of that. The images I'm using here today have come from her website um, and I'm sure that she wouldn't mind the, me using them given the fact is that all I'm trying to do is raise the awareness and, uh, on that note. Um, yeah, you could run the gambit um, but all intents and purposes vaccination is the most effective way to protect uh, your pet rabbits gets a little bit more complex when we're dealing with uh, breeders and exhibitors um, in as much as that a rabbit can still catch mixed mitosis though it's been vaccinated except for the effects are less severe and their own immune system kicks in it will scar the rabbit and potentially um, make the rabbit infertile so in the uh, showing world um, there are many individuals that will manage fleas, manage uh, mosquitoes um, in terms of infection control over vaccination. Now that's not recommended. If you can vaccinate, vaccinate for the sake of the animal. Um, if we do experience myxomatosis with animals that have not been vaccinated. Um, they are euthanized. They are put to sleep, um, usually as quickly as we possibly can. And uh, heartbreaking as it is, um, the disease or the, the virus is prevalent in the UK. And uh, keep your eye out for your fleas, monitor your mosquitoes, and vaccinate where you can. Rabbit hemorrhagic disease, or RHD, is a highly contagious and lethal virus disease that affects wild and domestic rabbits. The RHD virus, or the RHDV as we know it, um, and we'll call it through the, the, the rest of this little cast, um, VHD. It causes rapid death and it's a condition in which small blood clots develop throughout the bloodstream blocking the blood, the small blood vessels. And this clotting uh, fails, thus unable to control the bleeding and causes excessive bleeding that really uh, causes acute livid failure. So that's basically how the, the, the rabbits die. Now, I've got a couple of images here. Now, if you're squeamish, please look away. Um, and what I'm actually putting up here is two images. One of what I would call uh, a, a healthy rabbit um, and, and uh, then what we've actually got is two pictures there showing a rabbits that were confirmed to have um, VHD and we'll just sort of talk a little bit about that you can see the spleen there and the colour in the liver and those are visual indicators for those who do work with uh, rabbits in that regards. Now what I'd say to everybody is that uh, let the vets deal with it. Uh, they're the experts. They will take samples, slithers of the liver and go away and confirm exactly what it is. But visually, uh, for, for those that are initiated, uh, I'm just going to show you there a couple of horrible, nasty images that not everyone's a fan of. Um, 
to see what you can look at when you're looking at the internals of a rabbit and what the rabbit hemorrhagic uh, disease um, actually does internally. So, 1984, VHD disease broke out in China, just outside Shanghai and uh, not a short drive from, well about an eight hour drive from Wuhan, fancy that. Um, and in the first year in 1984, 140 million rabbits died from VHD1. Yeah? Take that information as you will. There is no history or records on how it came about. It just appeared in China in 1984. It was then found in Italy in 1988 and the disease was recorded in other parts of Europe where it escaped into the, the, the wild rabbit population. It reached Scandinavia by 1990 and VHD1 came to the UK in 1991 and at the time it came through it was a recordable disease um, so there's an element of records associated with that. In 1995 VHD1 was released into Australia uh, again killing millions of rabbits there. And then in 1997, because of its effectiveness in Australia, it was introduced illegally, I may hasten to add, into New Zealand. In, 20, uh, 2000, uh, in 2000, should I say, the ter turn of the millennium, it was first confirmed case of RHD or VHD1 in the United States. Um, and then in 2000 to 2010, it was endemic. Vaccination programs were effective in controlling the disease in domestic rabbits and the wild population slowly recovered, building an element of immunity to it. Okay. 2010, uh, an outbreak of VHD occurred in a rabbit farm in France. Tissue samples were taken from the outbreak and it was revealed the presence of the virus that has genetically related to but different from the known strains of VHD1 that they were already familiar with. It spread like wildfire through Europe um, and in 2014 it was reported in the UK where it spread rapidly. And again I'll refer back to the mixing map um, that I created in August of 2014 specifically to monitor and watch the spread of VHD2 throughout the country. Now, when I brought that to everybody's attention, trust me, I was shouted down. I was scaremongering um, because people had just got over 2000, uh, sorry, the VHD1, um, and nobody had the, 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 the love of the idea of a different variant being around. So when a grumpy Yorkshireman comes up and goes, it's coming guys, it's coming, um, I was barked down and told to stop scaremongering. Um, the, the beauty of that was is that uh, I managed to get a presentation into the British Rabbit Council with regards to it and they implemented a quarantine for those that were confirmed to have the new VHD2 virus. I spoke to the uh, Veterinary Association, gave them heads up um, the, the only downside is that is that it took quite a while before they uh, uh, allowed to bring in the vaccination. So, what they actually found in 2014 was that the Nobivac RHD uh, 1 didn't work. Um, and what we ended up having to do um, was import the vaccine uh, for VHD 2 uh, from France. And I may hasten to add, we were doing that illegally. Um, but we had to protect our, our rabbits. It says it took another two years from that point to so 2016 before um, they actually released a special import certificate um, to allow UK vets access to the vaccine two years after it hit the country. But we won't go there. That's me just being a bit, bit grumpy with regards to how quickly people react. And uh, yeah, I fancy that. I'll yeah, we're pretty slow over here, aren't we? 2015, RH, uh, VHD2 was detected in Australia, although it was not clear how it appeared there. By 2016, uh, VHD2 were killing rabbits in rescue centres, show rabbits, as well as individual pets. Okay? But just a, a, a quick information with regards to that, in terms of the mapping, we were surprised more 
pets were succumbing to it than show of breeding rabbits. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll expand on what my thought processes are with regards to that. Uh, 2018, um, it spread to North America. Um, and again in 2018, um, it was confirmed in New Zealand. How a virus like that moves from one side of the world to the other side of the world. Yeah, interesting one. Um, 2019, outbreaks begun in the United States. In 2020, RHD or VHD2 is spreading uh, across the US. And uh, for those guys from the state side, will be well aware of it. There's a lot of information about it. So it's not new. It's been around for a while. It's just everybody waits until something dies before they react to it. So VHD2 is highly infectious. It spreads rapidly throughout the world. And probably, to be honest with you, humans, humans spread it. Right? Now, the VHD virus can survive harsh environmental conditions. It can survive up to temperatures of 50 degrees centigrade and up to an hour um, and is not damaged by freezing. That's a, an interesting point. High temperature, freezing doesn't seem to uh, affect it. It's not inactivated by ultraviolet light like a lot of viruses. If you put them in the daylight or the sunlight, it will kill them off. Um, VHD2 doesn't uh, kill off that easy. They found carcasses and bones of dead rabbits um, or are a core source of the infection. Um, and what they also found is that in the bone marrow of the samples of uh, their the, the dead rabbits, they found that the virus was still active seven weeks after the death of the rabbit. Okay, So the virus is present in the environment for many, many months. And it's going back why the, the BRC insisted that you lock down for four months if you were found to uh, uh, have a case in uh, your, your shed, so to speak. Okay, The virus can be spread like that of mixomatosis uh, by insects, your fleas, your mosquitoes. Um, but what is also unique about this is because the death is so sudden, the rabbits don't have a tendency to go and find somewhere to hide to die. Um, so they're left out in the open and your foxes, your crows, your magpies and other scavengers will actually feed off the infected uh, 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 dead rabbits. And what happens then is obviously that they will fly away, uh, they will put droppings uh, out and about as, as most bird scavengers, foxes do. Um, and they found that those uh, faeces were also carrying the virus. So that's how it spread beyond the, the pale. But not only that, they actually found that flies, not flies that land on a carcass, feed on a carcass, um, and their fly spots or the, the, their excreta, um, they found that that also carried the virus. So if you've got a fly feeding on a carcass, flying uh, elsewhere uh, onto a piece of grass, drops a, a couple of feces or, or fly spots, yeah, that bit of grass then is carrying the virus. All it takes is an unsuspected rabbit to come along, eat it, wash it, it's, it's off again. But not only that, if you can think is that if you've got it in the, the feces of your scavengers and flies and fleas and one thing and another, you're out walking your dog, you step on something, um, you can take that back home into your own garden, rabbits eat, uh, even the smallest minute part um, and that can also infect the rabbit. So infection is transmitted from rabbits uh, via faeces, contaminated pastures, plants, grass, hay um, and again we discussed that of the fly spots or the, the faeces from scavengers um, and then infected rabbits become the source of infection um, for rabbits that are kept as pets. So cultivated veget uh, vegetables may also be contaminated. Uh, foraging for wild plants f fed to the pet rabbits have its benefits, no doubt. Um, but you're also putting to risk an unvaccinated rabbits from VHD. Okay? Strange one with regards to that is that you find a lot of exhibitors do not go out and forage. Okay? Um, and I think... That I why we don't do that, we just don't do that for the simple reason being is that you can't wash off 
any bacteria, well you can't wash off this virus, it's not killed by heat, it's not killed by freezing, you know? so consequently um, you're not going to scrub every bit of uh, dandelion leaf that you bring in, so the chances are that by foraging and feeding that to your animals on a regular basis, especially if you've got the local proximity where the disease of the virus is prevalent, you're actually feeding it to your animals. Okay. Um, other things such as contaminated hands, carriers, pet carriers, food bowls, bedding, shoes can all carry the infection. Well, just think about that. Um, I, when I feed my rabbits, I actually have a separate bowl and uh, I dip and I feed and I don't actually pick up uh, and interact with the food bowl. But if you imagine how are you going to pick up the food bowl with your fingers or however, if you've got contamination on there, and how will that contamination get on there? If you're like me, when you go into a cage, you'll give a rabbit a stroke. All right? If that's carrying VHD, okay, um, and, and especially we do the heads and the rabbits are constantly cleaning the face with the saliva, so they're spreading the, 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 the potential impact of the virus on the face, you're giving them a head rub, picking up the food bowl, going into the food, bang, you're sharing it. And that's how it can spread so rapidly through a, um, a shed of rabbits. Another one, water bottles with the spouts, okay? Or even water bowls. And the water spouts, when you take the spouts off, your hand or the spout hits your hand. And if you've stroked a couple of rabbits, you're contaminating the, the drinking bottle as well. Um, and so consequently, when we're out there feeding or, or watering, um, we're, we're hyper paranoid about touching points. Um, also, we once a week clean all our bowls and all our bottles with Vircon. It, it kills the virus. Okay. So when we were talking before about sort of individuals that have got a large number of uh, animals, infection control becomes a huge part of what we do. Okay. And uh, what you'll actually find, and, and this is not a criticism of pet owners, is that pet owners aren't as vestigious in terms of their hygiene as maybe a, a, a British Rabbit Council member or an exhibitor is. Okay, For those who breed, learn from those lessons and see if you can uh, reduce it. Okay. Um, on much what I've said above is, uh, or uh, what I've said um, is, is correct. Um, but I'm going to go back to that point that when we did the map, more pet owners succumbed to VHD than exhibitors. And that still stands to date. Um, when you're watching the VHD map, bang, pet, bang, pet, bang, pet. Um, indifference to the feed that we're getting from the British Rabbit Council, um, it's, it's rare. Okay. So anyway, let's just go back. Um, do you know that the Australians spend £209 million every year on controlling rabbits? Yeah? Interesting. All right. Now maybe it explains why the likes of this virus um, spreads around the world from one continent to another. Okay, Something to do with money, no less. So... What I'd also like to point out that although we talked about myxomatosis, how that came about, we talked about VHD1, bit of an unknown, changed into VHD2, which is a site more aggressive, where that came about, not 100% sure. The Koreans um, have created a new variant, fancy that, and they call that K5. And it's been approved and registered to be used as a rabbit biocontrol agent in 2016. Okay, so based on what happened with VHD2, we have about five years before another virus is to hit us, then two years before the authorities decide um, to allow us to import the vaccine to protect our animals. So you can understand why I'm mildly frustrated by the whole thing. Um, so, okay, trust me, Mother Nature will have the last laugh here, no doubt. So, how do we protect our rabbits? And I'll also say about the VHD2, it also attacks hares, which none of the others did. Um, so, folk kill rabbits to save money, okay? You take out your local wild population to protect your farms, 
okay, and then we pay to vaccinate to save our rabbits, right? What's the commonality there? Yeah, we pay to kill, we pay to keep alive. It's all about money, but we don't need to sort of go into that. So, how do we protect our animals? We isolate, hygiene, and vaccinate. Oh dear, I'm starting to sound like the telly. Um, the only difference being is that this vaccination is not free. It costs from 30 to £90 pound, um, to protect your rabbit. And what's really frustrating is that I know that only a very small proportion of that money goes to the manufacturers of the vaccine itself. Okay, but let's not go there. I could create a whole sub-series on that issue alone, um, but we won't. So vaccinate simple yeah you can protect against three viruses your myxomatosis your vhd1 your vhd2 and hopefully we can organize and sort out a k5 before it actually hits us okay so one of the things i'd like to sort of briefly explain with regards to vaccinations okay we know that nobivac will protect you uh, against mixy and vhd1 but Nobivac does not protect you against VHD2. That is an Aerovac or a Filovac, okay, that is needed. Unless you are blessed with the new vaccine, which is called Nobivac Plus. But, yeah, it's only the Nobivac Plus only works if your rabbit has originally been vaccinated for VHD2 first, if that makes sense. Easy? No. So here I'm going to put up a chart and you can actually see there that there's a process and it's a complicated little chart but what it actually boils down to is the fact that you do your Nobivac, your VHD1 and your Mixi, you do your Filovac, your Aerovac which is your VHD2, yeah, then your rabbit's protected. If you're then within the cycle um, you can then boost both or all three of those or those two vaccines with the Nobivac Plus. Okay, so what adds insult to injury is that not all vets understand this and they're not following the procedures. Okay, so rabbits are still dying. Okay, the vaccination may not have failed, it's just the monkeys that's injected them is not aware, not followed the procedures. Right? I can feel a lawsuit coming on. Uh, so I will say this, okay, it is your responsibility to fully understand the vaccinated, uh, uh, vaccinated needed and you need to find a vet that understands the rabbit's needs, right? Going to a non-rabbit vet is like going to a shropidist and asking them to fix your teeth, yeah? They'll have a good go and they might do a fair job but they're not specialists. So hunt down, use the Rabbit Welfare Association uh, um, and fun page that has a good list of uh, uh, what we call rat, uh, rabbit savvy vets and ask around and find the people that know what's going on with regards to rabbits, specifically the vaccination. And if you rock up and they go, oh, we don't know what that is, find yourself another vet. OK, they're, they're not up to date with their systems. They've not done their CPDs and that questions that do you trust those uh, those individuals with your animals? OK, but to summarise, all I've spoken about is vaccination is the only way forward. OK, and uh, I hope that's the last time that I quote Boris jo uh, Johnson with regards to things, because ironically, it's the same. Vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. Okay, so by all means, feel free to comment. It is 2021. Um, and if you're a vet or a rabbit professor and you'd like to come on and put your face in, in, in front of uh, ourselves online and explain um, my understanding is wrong, okay, I'm all ears. Yeah, I'm always open to be educated. I don't profess to know everything and the system's constantly changing. OK, so on the last note, with regards to your viruses, your Mixi, your VHD, uh, one at two and potentially K5 around the corner. OK, 
protect your little furry friends because the system will not. If you like this and you enjoy the grumpy Yorkshireman's approach, yeah, hit the subscribe button and the bell button and uh, what you'll do then is get notifications every time that uh, I put up one of these and I hope it's been of interest. Um, I, I don't profess to know everything and I do do a bit of research on the subjects as well um, but a lot of this has come about from my own physical experience of working with rabbits. Anyway, thank you.